we have none other than Mr. Lee Chappie. Uh, you guys might know him as the Jamie Vardy lookalike. Uh, Why? Why uh, say it? Why say it? Why I, say I, it? I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at, I, I can't see it personally. I don't know what they say, what people I, see. I, no, Andy King. I get Andy King a lot. You get Andy <laughs> King? Blimey. Well, I mean, if you don't know Lee, obviously do head across to his channel. Uh, there'll be a link down in the description uh, for uh, his channel. See a Leicester channel doing really, really well. I mean, absolutely smashing it. At the moment, you've gone up 1.3k since the last time I spoke to you, which is brilliant. That's mad. That's mad. I didn't know that. You're, you're literally keeping a score of my uh, subs as well. Even I forgot how many I've got this month, to be fair. Yeah, but, but yeah, we're doing well. We're doing well this side of the fence. We're doing well. It is. I mean, you're doing very well on that side. Trying. Of the fence, considering it's your, because with lesser results, it's the FA Cup final, your first one since the 70s, right? 1969, to be precise, oh, mate. God. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. This is a big, big time for you, and uh, obviously yeah. it's a huge, huge game as well for us. Um, yeah, four finals, by the way. Never won it. It's a bit like getting in bed with a bird for the first time and not actually going all the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I was, I was really hoping we'd be very professional, you know, very athletic, uh, like well, have very serious conversations. <laughs> um, but that's that's gone out the window pretty much within five minutes. So uh, yeah. Brilliant. Great content. Great entertainment content here for you on the channel. Hit the sub button, you know what to do. What's going on with Leicester at the minute? Yeah, it's just a case of uh, injuries. You've got to think some of the players came in that replaced some of the players that were injured and now they got injured. Like James Justin's come in, got mm -hmm. his chance for taking over Ricardo Pereira, who took an ACL injury, out for nearly nine months. And then James Justin's flying. This, this kid's come in, he's like, whoa, he's mustard. And then he does his ACL. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's you know, nice. Harvey Barnes, young England prospect, looking to go to the Euros, out for the rest of the season, not going to make it to the Euros. That's a whole left side gone. Mm. So, mm. so when people say, oh, they're bottling it, they're bottling it, they don't really look at the amount of injuries we've had. We had to play Ndidi at centre-back at one point because we had no flipping defenders. And then Ndidi gets injured for three months. sunchu has been injured for three months. Castagna's been out. Mm. The name goes on and on and on. We've had over 220 combined injuries. In the last 20. 20 games combined in the last 12 months. In the last 12 months, you've had 220 injuries. Games, games combined. Missed. I was going to say, games. I was going to say, I was games. like, how the Games, games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ga games combined, 220. That's huge. And so, so I mean, you guys at the minute, I mean, you, you've got this big injury list. Do you want to go through who Leicester are missing right now, obviously heading into this cup final? Who, who is not available to play? We are hoping... That Johnny Evans makes it because he was training. I've read the today that he's been training again today, so I'm okay. hoping he makes it because he's like the organizer between the three, you know, okay, of Su of yeah. Suyun and Fafana. He's like the the experienced head, while the others have got the legs. Yeah. Um, and they those three at the back are really doing well for us at the minute because obviously that's how we play at the minute. We're three at the back with the mm. James Justin missing. Ricardo's still not quite the same since that ACL return. But I think Brendan's got to play three at the back as and with win back sort of thing. As supporting up top, so ah, uh, it's going to be tough if we've not got Evans. I don't know how he's going to don't know how he's going to put the players together. So okay, so that's 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 the main injury, but everyone else is fit in terms of obviously Harvey Barnes. You mentioned James Justin, who has been superb. Yeah, right? he, they're he done. Was, yeah, that's okay. But then, but then everyone else, you've got the squad. Should have no Wes Morgan, and get, we still don't know if Johnny Evans is going to play tomorrow or not. We still don't okay. know. All right then. Well, I mean. You, we, we've mentioned the injuries and how it's had a severe impact on how you guys are doing. Um, what's 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 Brendan Rodgers been like in terms of just analysing the, those areas of weakness and sort of just trying to manage it? Has he has he fulfilled what you feel you feel he should have done, or is, is he fallen a bit short on some occasions? Yeah, at, at times, I feel like maybe he could have done a little bit better with some of the decisions he's made with some of the substitutions. Like if you remember the uh, was it the, the cup clash the way you beat us, he went defensive and we mm. lost in second half. Um, I think that was probably about a year ago now, to be fair. So I'm not going to knock him for 12 months ago. But um, he, he has got some good man management. Like, for example, Jamie Vardy's getting older and older and older. And 
if you watch Jamie Vardy now, he's not the same Jamie Vardy of 2016 where he used to hound every defender going and chase the ball all day long for 90 minutes. You don't see that from Jamie Vardy anymore. You only see those those timed runs. And I think that's all to do with Brendan's man management, which he's always been good at. Even Liverpool fans will say the same thing. Um, he's very good with the youth as well. And uh, obviously Leicester with this new facility, we've had £100 million training facility thanks to Harry Maguire's money. Um <laughs> He's uh, obviously in a good place right now with the club. Yeah, yeah. Into, so, into, yeah. So is, is, is he? So obviously, because there's, there's, he's been, you know, for me personally, rightly praised in terms of what he's done at Leicester. Because obviously, after Liverpool, it looked like he was on a, a bit of a downward slope. He took the Celtic job. People are, like, oh, he's just, you know, it's a Scottish league. He's not anything major. Comes to Leicester when you guys are on a, a bit of a slump under. Was it Claude Puel you had at that point? Wasn't oh, it? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, to be fair. Hats off to him. He got us through our darkest hour, our darkest days with the club when Vishay's helicopter went down, passed yeah. away. You know, it was a tough old time, that. And uh, he kept the team together because we could have crumbled. We, could, yeah. we really could have. The team could have fell apart. You don't know mm. what was going to go. I mean, we got knocked out by the FA Cup by uh, Newport County uh, during that time. But uh, does anyone... I don't care about that. It's the fact that we kept together and stayed up in the Premier League and stuff. Mm. Um, but, but the football itself... <sighs> Hmm. But he, he yeah, did, so... yeah, he did sort of move it from that counter-attacking style of you know the Ranieri era. He hmm. kind of did bring in that possession-based football, hmm. but it was pointless possession-based football. There was no, there was no attack. Jamie Vardy hmm. weren't scoring, uh, scoring goals. He's not scoring goals now, but I think that's maybe because he's brought Nacho on, and yeah. we're finally playing with two and up top instead of one. I think hmm. maybe Nacho is starting to nick. Vardy's goals, if that makes sense. Is he, is he coming good then? Because that was actually going to be my next question about Kalecci and Nacho, because obviously yeah. he had a very, very slow start for the past couple of years. And then all of a sudden, this series just exploded. Um, people may say, you know, it was just the cups that he's been doing it in. But, you know, overall in the league as well, I, I thought he's been performing quite well as well. Yeah, he's clearly not a lone striker. You know, so when you get, re- you know, just literally replace Jamie Vardy with Nacho for those odd games, it weren't working for him. He's not a lone striker. He needs a partner. So, Finally, Brendan Rodgers is playing on both up top, and now you're finally starting to see how how Nacho can thrive off of someone like Jamie Vardy's pace and break, you know, breaking up the defenders a bit and pulling defenders all over the place. Nacho can get in and get those. He does get scrappy goals. Mm. He does. He, he is one of those. He's a workhorse to get scrappy goals, and I can see him getting a scrappy goal mm. at Wembley. I can. Well, that's going to be very, very interesting. I think he, he's he's looking sharp, and obviously the. He's that fox in the box as well. I think you like to talk Jamie Vardy in those time runs. It is, obviously, you're saying he can't play on his own. Is he the natural successor to Jamie Vardy, or do you feel that there's right. potentially... You, you def- okay, so you feel you need to get someone in. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who yeah. Been, have you have been linked with anybody to kind of replace Jamie um, Vardy? It's uh, Ed Ward from Celtic, because obviously Brendan Rodgers has Rogers. Already, already managed him before for about three yeah. years at Celtic. Um, you know, it's a PSG academy, wasn't he, at one point? Um, I believe so, and, yeah. uh, He's had some good international experience as well, under-17s, under-19s, under-21s with France, isn't it, as well? Um, so, yeah, you got to... I think you've got to have a look at him, to be mm. fair. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with him there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we, we touched on Vardy, we touched on Kalecci and Acho. I mean, what are the other strengths that people might not be noticing about Leicester um, over the over the you know past few months? Yeah, it's the, mid, it's the middle. Um, you've got to look at Tielemans and Ndidi. Mm. Um, uh, what a strong partnership them two are and Didi is probably one of the uh, I don't know if he's underrated now but I still think I feel like because he's wearing the Leicester badge I don't think he gets the uh, the recognition of how good he really is mm. um, I said a couple of years ago on another channel I got laughed at live which is fair enough I don't mind I put my hands up you know if I'm wrong but I'm, I'm, I'm still standing my ground I'm not wrong and Didi is getting better and better and I said I said two years ago he will in about four, maybe four years time be as good as Kante was at Leicester, at Leicester. That's a big statement. That's a yeah. huge statement. Yeah, uh, at Leicester, at Leicester. So if he, okay, so if if okay, so even then, you know, because he got better, probably. he's got better at Chelsea than he was at Leicester. He's got yeah. even better. But you know, I'm watching Ndidi for ninety minutes. I watched Kante for ninety minutes every game that season. I see the similarities. And I see a great player that maybe will go on to somewhere like Atletico Madrid or something because they sold yeah. Thomas Part. Yeah, 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 they yeah. sold Thomas Partey, right? So who better than Ndidi to pick up? That's and that's true. a that's a step true. up. It's a step up to Leicester, yeah. I think. 
Yeah, oh, definitely. I mean, you're saying that. Obviously, Leicester now for two years have been in the run-in to the very last games yes. of the Champions League. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's a case you can see that it's it's not a fluke now. I think a lot of people last year were still kind of thinking, oh, you know, they've, they've got a bit lucky, they've played good football, they've been on form, but they won't do it again next year. You've done it again this year. I think the big thing to talk about there is, is the, the project. Now, obviously, Leicester, you can see, have a very, very strong project. You've already mentioned the £100 million facility that's been brought into place. T- tell me a bit more about, about Leicester and obviously what that project looks like. Yeah, you know, I think it's just, you've got to take hats off to to the recruitment and obviously the backs the, the backroom staff uh, for the way that they've dealt with losing big name players that we've created kind of ourselves, um, selling them on for a lot, a lot of money, pulling other players in and replacing them kind of like that. Mm. Ask any Leicester fan, have they missed Harry Maguire? They'll say, have you missed no. Harry Maguire? No. no. What about Ben Chilwell? I, I, Ben Chilwell, I think maybe we could have done with him now because of the amount of injuries that we had on that left side. You know, when you okay. look, when you when you look at it in terms of injuries, yeah. But yeah. if 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 James Justin was fit and didn't do his ACL in, no, I feel that James Justin was more than enough to replace Chilwell. When he came in, he just looked mustard, and he was. He just carried it on. Mm. Just unfortunate for him to to do what he did. Mm. King Power Branding said uh, that we're going to be in Europe in five years, and we all laughed. As local Leicesters, we laughed because you know <laughs> it's not happening. Two years later, we win the Premier League. God, that's right. always that, and, and now and now we've got a hundred million pound training facility, which mm. is one of the best in the world. I don't know if you've seen it, but you should probably take a look at it. Your fans should definitely have a look at it as well. It's it's unreal out of this world. Yeah. And then you've got the the fact that all these players now we've got so many international players playing for this mm. side as well, and that, that some of the players that we've signed and then sell on for like eighty million, Harry Maguire. Um, some of these players that we do sell on are, are that are wanted. Everyone wants for everyone wants for Fana now. Everyone looks yeah. at for Fana. Yeah. We've won for thirty six million euro. Why didn't no one else buy him? Well, you've got a very good structure in place, haven't you? That's the thing. Yeah, there's there's definitely a good formula going at this club, and mm. uh, I'm here for the ride. To be honest with you, do you, do you think? Obviously, with the the Tottenham job still available, <laughs> no, this is this is this is what I want to talk about because this is <laughs> you hear a lot of Tottenham fans saying, you know, Tottenham are a big club with this with that. What do you think the chances are of of Brendan Rodgers maybe looking at that Tottenham job, just weighing it up, sort of going, you see the positives, you see the negatives. Do you, do you do you think he would ever consider that that job, or do you think that the project that Leicester have is is just so much more lucrative and so much more has so much more potential than than Tottenham? I can't believe you have asked me about the Tottenham thing. I mean, well, just, I think conversation. Yeah, I know. I know. They're just to me, they are not. They're not a successful side. It's just they're in name only. They've got mm. this m- massive stadium and some rich owner that that don't really take them anywhere. Okay, they're a historic club. Blah blah blah. Yes, Are you they? can respect. You yeah, well. Do you th- res- do you really think do you really consider Tottenham a historic club? Well, they're 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 respectful because they're a big they're a they're, they've been in the Premier League. They've not dropped out. They've never dropped okay, out. Okay, okay, okay right. all right. So, yeah. so they've never dropped out. You know, they're, they're they're always there somewhere, aren't they? Lurking about third, third. <laughs> Or third, and um, yeah, and they don't tend to win anything, but they, they just make a big noise. They're a bit like one of them modded Ford KAs back in the day, or you know, or you. They're a bit like you know what I mean. They make a <laughs> big exhaust on the back, you know, that go down the you know your your forty mile per hour rows, and you look and you go, you know, he's having fun, but that's yeah. about it. You know, that's how it's Tottenham Hotspur. Yeah. Isn't it? You guys, the past two seasons mm-hmm. have been in the Champions League spots. Yeah, and lost to the it. very last minute and lost yeah. them. Yeah, potentially because I mean, you and I are going to be doing another collab next week, aren't we? Yes, of course. Literally, we are. <laughs> we're going to be talking about you know the fact we're playing you in the league. Yeah. How how do you feel about the the league spots and obviously on top of that as well? Like if you do slip out again, wh- where, where's the problem? Wh- where where would the route be? Last season, I can blame um, a bit of a, a stump from injuries. We had loads out at that mm. point last season. Um, we replaced Ricardo Pereira at the time with Ryan Bennett, Loney from Bloody Wolves. Mm. So don't get me started on last season. But this season, I don't think we've got an excuse. If we if we don't get Champions League football, I think we're going to lose 
Madison. We're going to lose Ndidi. We're going to probably lose Ricardo Pereira. I think we're going to lose a lot of players if we don't get Champions League football this season. If we don't secure it, we'll lose players. End of discussion. But I do want the FA Cup. If, if you ask me which one, I, I would gladly take the FA Cup because it's something you can say you've won. You can't say, I've won top four. You can't say that. I don't can't know say, you could ask an answer about that. But, but, yeah, but you can't. Over, over, over a few years, you can't say, oh, well, we won top four four years ago. Well, that, that's, that's, that's nothing. You want, you want the trophy, which is fair enough. But, but if you could say, oh, I won the FA Cup four years ago, yeah. what have you done? Nothing. Because I'm a Tottenham Hotspur fan and, and I'm still sitting on the fence. <laughs> It's true, though, like the, the <laughs> especially, <laughs> especially for your your guys' position, it, it's a real sense of romance, and I, I, th- hmm. I think like, I've I've always loved like Leicester. I mean, ever since I remember, I went to look at it when I went to look for unis. I was going to go to De Montfort, and I went and I was just being around the city, and my own my friend ended up going to DMU. You know, it, it's such a wonderful place, and then obviously it's small. especially it's a small city. It's small a small city. city, but even then, even still, you know, it's it, you've still got this. Really good community. Obviously, the football club's amazing. Yeah, um, the sport here, mate. The sport here. Mark Selby, world world champion in the snooker, right? You've got the, the basketball, the Leicester Riders, champions of England. The Tigers, well, we don't even need to let's talk about the rugby, the Leicester Tigers. They're a massive side. They've won mm-hmm. everything you can name. And now they're in European Champions f- final. And Leicester in the FA Cup final. We're a sporting city, mate. Mm. We're a sporting city. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. But uh, I'll tell you what, we'll round it off there because I kept saying I will round it off and we never did because I kept having more questions. Tell That's me right, now, man. genuinely, how do you feel about this final? I'm not going to force you for a score prediction because I'm going to give you one. Okay, go I'm on. Gonna, I'll give go on, you go, one. Go for it. Go on. Tell me, get right for me, round up in one minute how you think this final is going to go. Okay, are you ready? Okay, go. on your marks, get set, go. The ball's kicked off. Madison and Didi. Straight through. Tillemans. Straight through. Nacho's on. Nacho! 1 0 to the Foxes. And that's it. 90 minutes up. Done. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that round up in one minute and you've done it in 10 seconds. Um, 10 I, seconds. I, I think it's going to be a bit of a scrappy game. Mm. I have a feeling it's not going to be the finesse final that we all want. I think it's going to be quite scrappy. And, uh, and Jamie Vardy's going to have a worldie because he's not had a worldie for a while. And I think it's time. It's a final. It's important. Get yourself out there, Vards, and, and either bag a goal or, or create some. Come on, Vardy. You know what to do. You know what to do.